So which team in the SEC is under the most pressure to win in 2024? I know I've got my opinion about this, but I'm going to start with Matt DeBerry right off the bat. Go ahead, Matt. What do you think? The first three to me that come to mind for different reasons are LSU, Auburn, and Florida. Uh, for LSU, this is year three for Brian Kelly, a guy that you went out and got from Notre Dame because you thought he could turn that program into a national championship caliber team. Two years into it, I don't know how many LSU fans, excuse me, are a little disappointed if they're optimistic. He did win the West in his first year. Not so great of a team last year. The defense was just atrocious. So I do think Brian Kelly and LSU are under some pressure to get that thing going to where they thought it would be year three. In year two, Kirby played for a national championship. You're in year three with Brian Kelly. I think you need to see some results. Uh, Hugh Freeze at Auburn, I think they need to take a step forward in year two. Uh, Dean, we've talked about it before. I don't know if that program is on the rise or on the decline yet. I think the jury's still out on Auburn. I think they're a big question mark for me. But a lot of the fans over there are very optimistic. But at some point, you've got to go from average to above average to a really good competitive team. We'll see if Auburn can take that step. And then, Ryan, I've got Florida just because – they can't, there's no reason they should be this bad. I think they'll take a step forward because they have Graham Mertz returning. Always important to have your starting quarterback coming back for another year. That's big. I like some of the pieces they have defensively. But with that schedule, they're looking like they could have another losing season. There's a lot of pressure. Billy Napier, year three, can he get that program back on track or not? This is a big season for him, Ryan. Yeah, can we – am I allowed to go outside the SEC? Yeah. Right? I think it's Ohio State. I think Ohio State showed us over the last month that they feel the pressure. You lose to Michigan three years in a row. Michigan wins a national championship. Uh, Ohio State, they do everything that they possibly can this offseason to bolster that roster and and do what they can to to make it seem like they're true contenders moving forward. Got to see it happen with Ryan Day. But I think out of all of the contenders, his seat's got to be the hottest. Clemson popped in my head a little bit, um, but – it, it, this is just a little bit more of what Clemson's been in their history. So is the pressure really, really on Dabble? I think each year it gets a little bit hotter and a little bit hotter. Uh, with what you were saying about Florida, I don't know that they're going to take a step forward. Looking at that schedule and looking at their situation, I think it might it might be pretty lateral. Uh, but that's, that's not a good situation for Florida. I think Ohio State is the answer nationally. I mean, Matt, talk about Ohio State. I mean, you're kind of – take there because we, we had a curveball here but I, I think Ohio State does have a lot of pressure he's not won the national championship yet and you know he was within a kick of of getting to the national championship game probably winning it against TCU and, you know Georgia was within a play of winning it in 12 and they had to wait another uh, nine seasons to win the national championship yeah I think the pieces are there for Ohio State to do it maybe not a quarterback that and the offensive right. line I think is a question mark if you ask people up there but They've got a really good defense coming back. They've got skilled players all over the place. Three straight losses to Michigan and no national title coming up on 10 years now. I think 2015, if I'm incorrect, Dean, let me know. But, yeah, that trophy is getting a little dirty, and that program is desperate for a national championship again. They're always there, too. They're always one of the best teams. But I, I agree from a national standpoint, Ohio State is definitely up there when you talk about how good their current team is plus the fact that they have to beat Michigan, plus the fact that they could be a team that, in my opinion, has enough talent to win a national championship. You got to go out, you got to get done, got to hit your kicks, you got to execute in the biggest games. They haven't been able to do that in the last several years now. This is a massive, massive year, like Ryan said, for Ryan Day. So I think for different programs, there's different pressure. I think, at, I think, I think, I think Georgia's got to be on this list too, to be honest with you, and here's why. They've been the best team the last three years. They've won two national championships. That's not exactly the 1990s Atlanta Braves. But, I mean, you know, I think they left one on the table this past year. And um, I think there's going to be pressure. When you're, when, you're putting up in, when you're putting as much into your program as Georgia has with Kirby Smart and as much as Kirby has, there's pressure to win. I mean, they should have won the last – the national championship in 2023 they probably they probably should win it in 2024 i want to kind of get to the season a little bit before i say that you know but when you look at who's got to win right now 
I, I mean, there's no question Billy Napier's got to win right now or it's over, but I think it's over. So we're, we're, we're just sort of watching everything burn down. I think at Auburn, it's a very, I think at Auburn, it's, it's a very important moment. I don't think that this is probably it for him, but it's a very important moment. I think at Arkansas, this is a very important moment. Um, I think if you're Tennessee, you don't want to go backward. I think t- Tennessee and Clemson are in similar situations, Matt, in that or Ryan, in that they've both seen success, but they kind of regressed a little bit, and it's probably time to start picking it back up, but I'm not sure if they can. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot harder. It feels like uh, – well, look, the, the changes to the SEC and in college football, I think, make it inherently a little bit more difficult for everybody, but those – Teams that have been at the middle of the pack in the SEC, are they are they going to have a real chance to compete with the Georges and what we think is going to be the Texases and the LSUs? Uh, Tennessee's kind of in that next tier of teams. I think it's going to be really hard for them to to reach an SEC championship. Doesn't mean that you can't make the playoffs as Tennessee because you can certainly go 10 and 2 and maybe miss out on the SEC championship, slip in as the 9, 10, 11, or 12 seed. Up there, I think that Tennessee's definitely done a better job over the last few years of just getting the talent. I, I, Josh Heifel, and now they're under investigation for some of that. Oh but my God, I forgot about that. That let me just say this though, y'all. The, that's go ahead, part. Ryan. It's so ridiculous, man. I mean, they really should. I don't. I don't know what's being. You know, I, from what I've read about what's been alleged, like we've got to get a hold on what is what is allowed and not allowed go ahead ryan this is this is kind of just seems i got tennessee on this one this seems ridiculous it's a distraction yes, it, it's a sure. it's a distraction in an off season where you're you're trying to start fresh you're kind of restarting a little bit with this roster some new guys a new face at quarterback that a lot of people are really excited about so i think that tennessee over like with hypo they've been moving forward they've it's it's been an upward trajectory but you don't want that year two to just be this pop where they beat alabama and it was all fun. You don't want that to be a one-year wonder. You want that to start to become more the norm. I think the next two seasons will tell us. I mean, that that they're going to tell us if that's going to happen or not. What do you think, Matt? I mean, with with uh, those two. I mean, where 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 are where are we with Clemson, Tennessee, LSU, uh, and say like USC out west? Uh, USC well, the first thing that came to mind a little different but as far as the SEC goes I'm just thinking about coaches and where their seat is I think Shane Beamer's seat is fine um, yeah, I think Josh Heupel's seat is fine uh, Lane Kiffin's seat is fine but there's one program in the SEC that I think is kind of passing those uh, teams and that's Missouri I think they're going to have another really good year Eli Drinkwitz is proven to be one of the best coaches not only in the league but maybe across the country he's done a great job and South Carolina seeing Missouri kind of pass them. Kentucky seeing Missouri pass them. Tennessee, in a way. I forgot who won that game last year, but it seems like ten, you know, Missouri is a program more on the rise. Who could be another top 15 team in the country next year? They've got a lot of returning talent coming back. But USC out west, it's obviously not working so far. Lincoln Riley looking like a fraud right now. Um, I don't know what they're going to do. It's a fraud alert. Wow. <laughs> In a little bit. I mean, what has he done? What has he done? He His best team lost to Georgia in the Rose Bowl, and a lot of that had to do with bad coaching. He can't field a defense. Uh, he can't build a staff. Uh, he, he's an offensive guy who cannot run a program. Uh, sure, I, I'm sure he takes you know those Heisman trophies as national championships to him. Whatever. They don't matter. This isn't 1997 in the, in, anymore. The, the Heisman Trophy doesn't mean as much to me, and I think across the country – as it may be used to in the 90s. No, I and think early. you're right about that. Um, so, cool. Have your Heisman trophies. But Caleb Williams won nothing under Lincoln Riley. Nothing. No one has won anything under the guy. So he's a fraud. Um, Ryan's guy, uh, James Franklin up in Penn State, uh, he, he's oh, a fraud. I think, it's, I think it's an important moment there, to be honest yeah. with you. Yeah. Um, th- there's a lot of programs that really need – have a big year as far as where are we going to go as a program? Are we going to keep – you know, Coach X or Coach A or B, or are we going to give him one more year? Or are we just going to cut ties and say, hey, college football is changing. We need another guy who can get us to where we want to be. So several programs like that. And I do think Clemson might be one of them, Dean. I know Dabo is Dabo over there, but eventually they're going to have to, you know, show that they can be a legitimate national title contender or else maybe they start looking somewhere. Go ahead, Ryan. 
Yeah, I, the, the, I got stuck on, on Lincoln Riley, maybe being on Fraud Watch. You're not wrong. I mean, if you just look at the trajectory, it's gotten a little bit worse every single year since he took over as a head coach. But uh, I, I kind of want to go back to what Dean was saying with Georgia. I think when you become what you are with Georgia, there's an inherent pressure every single season to to win because you should. You yeah. This should happen, right? Those national championships – should happen if you're fielding rosters like this, if you're fielding uh, coaching staffs like this, if you're spending that the kind of money that you do on the recruiting trail to go out and, um, and and court these guys. So I think that every single year there's that pressure, not the same pressure where it's, hey, if you don't win, you're out, Kirby. That that's not it's not the same thing. But uh, when you're running a program like that, it's there's legacy pressure. There's just the year to year of a fan base that's now spoiled. Right. Because now now the fan base knows what that tastes like and they know what it tastes like twice. So I think that every single year and George is going to be in the conversation. So different type of pressure, but they still have it. Let me say this about the word spoiled, because I think it's. I don't know. OK, so Georgia fans have been asked to do a lot and they have traveled. They have donated. They have done a lot of things that. um they've been asked to do by this head coach and this administration, I guess, you know, it was Greg McGarity. Now it's um, Josh Brooks. They have done everything. They've come, they've had 93,000 people at a meaningless spring football game. They've done a lot of things. I think that, um, I think they've done a lot. Now, I don't think that Georgia was a failure in 2023. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is they lost the wrong game. But they're, the fan base is doing every single thing it can do. It has provided every single thing it could, could pro- provide to this coaching staff and this and this group. And, you know, those guys lost the wrong game. It's not an indictment of the program. They just lost the wrong game. But I do think that there's a pressure for them to win. I, if they're not in the semifinals, Matt, I think that something's happened that's a little bit odd. That's my take on Georgia in 24. Yeah, they would have lost to a, a worse team because yes. there's a whole lot of better teams out there than Georgia. So if they don't make the semifinals, at least, right, something, there was a key injury or they shot themselves in the foot over and over and on the biggest stage to whoever. But I don't think they're going to be playing a team better than them in that round to get to semifinals or the final four. That should be a game. No matter how you look at it right now, Georgia should be able to get through that round no matter who it is, because uh, I'm assuming Georgia is going to be a really high seed anyway. So we don't know how many upsets, massive upsets are going to happen in this 12 team playoff. Some will. That's just part of the game. But if you're Georgia going into the season, you have to feel really, really good about your chances, even with a really good Ohio State and a team that could be really good in Texas and in Oregon on the rise. And you know, we'll see if LSU takes a step forward or anyone else in the SEC. But in that conference, it does kind of look like Georgia, maybe a little gap than everyone else, considering what's happened at Alabama. But Georgia should absolutely be at, there at the end. Um, that's the privilege they put on themselves. They've earned that privilege. And, um, you know, they have to play to that standard uh, every single year. And that's what they try to do. And it's working. Thanks for watching.